Hey y'all, this is another Getting Real with Ashley Dawn and I want to talk to you about hope for the holidays. I know that a lot of people are struggling with depression. I know that a lot of people are struggling with finding hope when someone they love has died, has went to heaven, has went to be with the Lord and they are struggling to find hope. I know that our family um, you know, obviously my dad went to heaven four years ago in October. And so the holidays tend to be very, very difficult because he's not here the way that we are used to him being here. And so we try to find different ways to honor him, to honor his memory, to keep him a part of the celebrations. Um, and recently my uncle, my godfather, my mom's oldest brother went to heaven as well. And so I know that it's very hard for a lot of my family right now, for my cousins, for my mom. And it's very easy to fall into depression, especially around the holidays. It's very easy to not know why you're in a dark place, to not know why you don't have an appetite, to not know why you don't really have a lot of desire to be around people. That, you know, it hits you all out of the blue sometimes and you're like, well, I don't have energy anymore and, and I'm not happy anymore and I just don't know why. And then you got to step back and be like, oh wow, I just went through this traumatic event. This person that I love so much is, is missing from my life. Maybe that triggered it. Maybe that put me in this place. And I know there's a lot of, you know, stigma out there about mental health and about depression and, you know, not all depression is suicidal. Some depression is, but not all depression is. Some people are just stuck in a place of darkness. They don't want to hurt themselves. They, they're just in darkness and, and they don't have energy and they don't want to be around people and they're just sad all the time. Some people, they just want to end it. Some people feel like it, life is too much. The things that have happened to them is too much. The trauma that they're going through is too much. Maybe loss is too much. Something happens and it's like you break and you don't know how to get fixed. And listen, I'm not here. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not here to, you know, tell you why you're doing what you're doing, how you're doing what you're doing. I did study psychology for a good bit, but I do not have a license. I am not a doctor. I can't prescribe anything. I am just a daughter of the most high God that loves you and that wants you to know how loved you are. I know that the holidays can stink. Maybe you went through a breakup. Maybe last year you were in this relationship and you just thought that the relationship was going to be everything and you guys broke up right before the holidays this year. Maybe you're still grieving over that relationship. Maybe you thought that y'all were going to get married. Maybe the guy told you that you were going to get married. Maybe you talked about marriage. Maybe you talked about being a stepmom. Maybe you talked about being a stepdad. Maybe you talked about the the following year and, and events. And maybe you talked about meeting families and going out of town and, and visiting relatives and, and doing all these things. And, and maybe you're grieving the plans that never were fulfilled. Maybe you're grieving the promises, the empty promises that somebody spoke to you. Maybe you're wishing for that relationship and you're hurting and you don't know how to verbalize it. You don't know how to put it into words, but you're just sad and you're just hurting and, and you don't want to get ready. You don't want to do your hair. You don't want to dress up. You don't want to go to that Christmas party. You don't want to go to that event and you don't understand why. That's depression. That's depression. When your energy is gone, when you just feel sad all the time, when you just feel like you're in a dark hole and you just can't get out of, when you struggle to get ready, when you struggle to take care of yourself, when you maybe can't sleep or maybe sleep all the time. I struggled with depression a lot. Um, it started about, I got married nine years ago. I went through my first separation eight years ago, second separation seven years ago, third and final separation, and ultimately divorce six years ago. And through those three, four years, I struggled a lot with depression, grieving the marriage that I thought we were going to have, grieving the empty promises that never got fulfilled, grieving uh, the things that we were supposed to do as a couple, grieving the marriage that you know I had dreamt of and prayed for and, and 
I thought was being fulfilled and I thought that those prayers are being answered and they weren't and you know I found myself in a very dark very sad very lonely place to where I felt like the walls were closing in on me especially around um, holidays I will never forget my first Thanksgiving away from my parents I had moved away from my church family my parents my friends everything to my ex-husband's uh, hometown with his parents and his family and I was all alone my ex-husband would fight with me all the time and would say really awful things he was in a terrible place spiritually and mentally and he was a mess um, and he'll tell you that um, but I was all alone he we had gotten into an argument he left went to his mom's without me we had one car he took the car and I was stuck at our house by myself I cried I prayed I screamed I curled up in a ball I threw up a couple times and I went to sleep that was my first Thanksgiving as a as a wife <laughs> not exactly magical my first Christmas as a wife was even worse um, and they just continued to get worse. And so my depression spiraled and I just went deeper and deeper and deeper to the point where I was actually, I wouldn't hurt myself, but I was praying that God would kill me. I was praying that God would end it, that God would take it all away, that I wouldn't have to be hurting so bad. I grew up in the church and I grew up with the belief that divorce was wrong. I never wanted a divorce. I was the girl and when I was a child that said, I will never get a divorce. Well, never say never because guess what I did um, but it was so bad and it was so dark and I was just praying that God would end it and then I wouldn't have to live anymore because it was so hard I was so sad I tried and tried and tried to find hope and I was trying to give hope to everyone around me but I was struggling and honestly in that moment I didn't know I had depression I thought depression was so far removed from what I had, I thought I was just sad and lonely. In my head, I thought, well, if you're depressed, you're just, you're really bad off and, and you just want to kill yourself. Nope, that's not all the time what depression is. Sometimes it is. And sometimes that person doesn't hate themselves. They're just hurting so much that they feel like if they killed themselves, if they ended it, life would be easier for them and for the people they love. A lot of times, you know, when people die by suicide or when they take their own life, a lot of people say different things like, well, you know, how selfish of them. Honestly, most people that are struggling with depression are thinking in their heads, I know this is backwards and I know this is the opposite of what is true, but they're thinking in their heads that they're fixing their loved one's problems. They don't realize how much pain their loved ones are going to experience as a result of their life being ended, as a result of their candle being snuffed out before it's supposed to be. And so I really would ask you, you know, when you hear of somebody dying by suicide, don't say, well, how, how selfish of them. You don't know what they were going through. You don't know mentally where they were at. And now I'm not saying that it's okay. I'm not saying that it's a good thing. I'm not saying that, you know, people should do that. I'm just saying the people that are struggling, you don't know their struggles. I have a friend on Facebook. Her name is Heather Palacios. I think I said that name right. I don't know if I did or not, but if you look her up, she's incredible. She does, she has a whole ministry called uh, the Life Box, and she sends life boxes to people that are struggling with their mental health, people that are struggling with finding the will to survive through the difficult situations, through the trauma, through the life's, uh, the life that they are living. She has an incredible ministry. I've heard her speak several times. She honestly is one of my favorite speakers because she's authentic. She shares her struggle. She shares her junk. She shares what she's going through and she doesn't sugarcoat it. She doesn't, you know, make it like everything's wonderful. She shares the hard parts and she gives so much hope to people that are struggling. And so if you're watching this and you're struggling or, you know, I really highly encourage you to look up Heather Pelosius, uh, P-A-L-I-C-I-O-U-S or AS. Um, she lives in Miami. Her and her husband are pastors of Church by the Glades or Church of the Glades. No perfect people allowed. And she, I can't sing her praises enough. She's awesome. 
Um, and she has a story where she attempted to take her own life because it was so difficult and, and she shares her story better than I can, but she's a powerful woman of God and the enemy would have loved for her light to not be shining, but her light is shining and it's shining even brighter regardless of her past and, and the things that have happened. And I want to encourage you if you're struggling with suicide or depression that your light is shining. Even when you think it's not, even when you think you're in the darkness, your light is still shining and your light is needed and it's important. And God has a purpose and a plan and he's going to use even the painful moments, Romans 8, 28, the moments that you wish uh, you could just erase. He's going to use those to help others too. I look at Heather's life and her life is, is so fruitful even out of the pain and because of the pain. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're struggling with mental health, reach out to somebody. Heather would be a great person to reach out to, but she is only one person. So uh, reach out to somebody else that you trust. Reach out to uh, somebody that you know is going to show you mercy and grace and love and is going to show you compassion and understanding in that moment. Um, I'm here always. You can message me. Find me on Instagram, Inner Beauty Ministry, or uh, Facebook at Inner Beauty 101. Send me a message and I'll pray for you. I'll talk with you. I'll try to, you know, walk through it holding your hand. It says in the Bible to mourn with those who are mourning, to grieve with those who are grieving, to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. And so if you need somebody to cry with you, I'll, I'll cry with you. If you need somebody to laugh with you, I'll laugh with you. You are not alone. The whole point of my videos are to remind people that you are seen celebrated and loved and most of that is because I've lost way too many friends and way too many family members to suicide and it's heartbreaking there is a void that will never be replaced um, and even not losing people to suicide I have experienced lots of my friends struggling with mental health and feeling all alone and feeling like they're the only ones. And I just want to tell you, if you're struggling with your mental health, you're not the only ones. I know that you look at my videos and you're like, oh, Ashley Dawn has it all put together and, and she's always happy and she's always joyful. And I try to be, but every day is, is not the same. And I've gone through my share of difficulties and hard times. Like I said, I went through a divorce. I went through depression. I went through um, <laughs> suicidal thoughts, a lot of them. I went through feeling like my life was over. Um, a lot of times you feel like you have a scarlet letter on you if you get a divorce and, and you could be completely right biblically and, and your husband or your wife could have cheated on you and if, could have betrayed you and could have just done every single thing opposite of what they were supposed to do when they married you and you can still feel like you did something wrong even when you didn't. Um, there's just shame. There's a stigma attached to divorce and um, it doesn't matter if it's your fault or not. You feel like it is and so I get it. I understand what grief is I understand what it's like to grieve so much over and over and over again and, and to never stop grieving and to continue to just cry and be sad and just ask God like why is this happening why am I going through this and I get it I've been there I've been in those moments where you are just so stinking sad and you just feel like your life is just ending I've been there and it stinks and it's awful and I felt those same feelings I felt like I was all alone I felt like I was by myself and it's not fun but then I've had a friend reach out to me and tell me that they love me then I've had a friend reach out and say hey you're not alone and that friend encouraged me more than I ever thought they could so maybe this video will encourage you more than you ever thought that you could be encouraged in this moment. I know what it's like to grieve, to grieve. I know what grief is like. I know how important it is when somebody will hold your hand through the hard times. And I just want to hold your hand when you get sad. There is hope for the holidays. Even if you can just reach out to one person and spend time with, with one person, I would say the biggest thing is don't isolate. I was completely isolated. I was all by myself. I didn't have anybody. And that made it so much worse because the voices in your head get louder when there's nobody there to shut them up. And sometimes you need a friend in your life to shut the negative voices in your head off and to say, no, that, that isn't true. The world would not be better if you weren't here. 
Our problems wouldn't be gone if you disappeared. Our problems would be multiplied because you're needed. So there is hope for the holidays, even when you don't feel it. Listen, I don't feel joyful every single day. It is a daily choice to choose joy when life is a little crummy, to choose joy when life is a little sad, to choose joy when I don't feel like it, when I just feel like staying in bed all day and just crying, to get out of bed, to take a shower, to wash my face, to wash my hair, to put on a nice outfit and say, you know what, I'm going out today. I'm going to spend time with the people that I love while I have the opportunity to do so. I just wanna encourage you, your life is precious and it's special and you're needed. This holiday season may not be the bells and whistles and, and all the trimmings that you wanted it to be, but there is still good to be had. There are still blessings to experience in this season, even when it's an unknown season, even when you don't know how you're going to make it. There is still good to be seen. Look for the blessings. I and praying that God just overwhelms you with his love and his blessings and that you know how special you are, especially on Christmas. Jesus came to do life with you. And Christmas is our reminder of that. I love you. You're seen, celebrated, and loved. I will catch you in my next one.